foot in specific. Greeting from the blue carpet. Let's check in with Jacob. Hi. How are you this evening? I'm doing very well. How about you? I'm really excited because, what well, first I get to see you in person, but second, this is your first time at the GLAAD Media Awards, correct? It is. Do you want me to look at you or at the camera? You can look in the camera or at I. You know, I'll look at we're, you. We're That's both more natural. At you. Okay, great. Um, um, yeah, it's my first time coming to the GLAAD Media Awards. I'm so happy to be nominated. Um, I think we're going to lose because we're in the same category as the Diane Sawyer, Caitlyn Jenner 2020 interview. Um, but I just got to meet Diane and say hi. So I was like, it's all worth it. But your special was completely different because we're reaching transgender equality. Where mm -hmm. you already now have marriage equality. You still go one step beyond that. You're not necessarily in a box, but yet you encompass all of the community that's got some accolades, but now you're still going forward one step more. Do you want to talk with us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I think that there's a really common misconception that being trans means only being a trans man or a trans woman, right? And in reality, trans people are so diverse and encompass a broad array of people all over the gender spectrum. And a big part of my message is just that you shouldn't have to be, you shouldn't have to be a man or a woman in order to be happy and loved and embraced by society. You should be able to be in between or outside of the gender binary and, and, and live a fulfilling, lovely life, you know? Now, speaking of love-filled life, I'd love to talk with you about your special, but I didn't get to know much about your dad, but he yes. seemed like the coolest person to have breakfast with, because I think some people are not yet ready to have breakfast with their son wearing lipstick or jewelry, yeah. but your dad was just dad. Yeah, my dad is like, I think he's really come a long way in terms of um, in terms of learning to like affirm and love me the way that I am, you know? Was there a bumpy road? Because it seemed like you got the coolest dad when we watched that special. Did, is there something we didn't see that was bumpy? It was certainly a journey. Um, I think that everyone has a journey with their parents. Uh, you know, and there were moments when he was less open about the idea of sort of me expressing my gender differently. But it was also because I didn't really have the language to describe my identity for so long. And so I think I had trouble expressing to him who I was and how I felt. So, you know, I, I think we, we grew together and we learned to sort of embrace everything together. Um, and uh, and we're in a really wonderful place now and I feel so grateful for that. Jacob, where do you think that came from within to find that acceptance for yourself and then within your family and not run away from your parents? Because part of that story is people leave their family to become themselves yeah. and then come back. Where did you find it within yourself to really connect like that? Because that's a tribute to you as well. Yeah. I think for me it was about patience. Okay. Um, I think that patience was was the key virtue for me in, in terms of like learning to embrace and love uh, my parents even when they were figuring everything out, you know? And one thing I remember I said to my parents when I first came out to them um, was I told them, you know, like, look, I know that you may have trouble loving and accepting me right now, but I will love you and accept you as long as it takes you to figure this out, you know? So you offered what you wanted. Yes, exactly. And I told them I still I'm gonna have a relationship with you, even if, um, even if you're having trouble sort of figuring this out and and feeling uh, feeling good about who I am. Now, Jacob, how did you get involved with the MTV special? Did they search you out? Did you apply to an ad? Because you know your story is no. very interesting. I can't imagine they were casting you. Well, it was it was sort of twofold. So uh, the production company, when they were first looking for people to feature, found me just via the internet, via my website, um, and then they got in touch. But then I had had a relationship with MTV from working on the T Word project with Laverne Cox, who's right over there. Yes, um, hi Laverne. Oh, Mama, Mama Laverne. <laughs> um, so I, I so I had worked with MTV before, and they knew me. Uh, and so I think that really helped in terms of the casting process as well. How did your life change after being on that MTV series, that MTV show? Um, you know, I mean, it's definitely, the hustle is still real, right? Like, you, you can't get lazy in this industry, um, and, and uh, you have to keep making your own luck. Um, but I, I think what it's really done is empowered me to, to claim more of what I want and where I'm going, um, and, and to realize that I can produce incredible television, I can write incredible television, um, I can make it happen for myself, uh, and, and that there is a lot of energy and sort of good vibes behind me and all of that. Now, this is probably the question for the audience. They're wondering, are you doing this then for television? No! Oh my, well, okay. So like, I mean like TV's fun, right? But I, I was wearing fierce lipstick way before I was ever on camera, honey. Um, no, I was strutting around in five inch heels in college when no cameras were on me. It was just a bunch of frat boys staring at me, right? Um, so no, I mean this is certainly not for television or for attention. In fact, uh, 
I think that the idea that trans people perform their gender identity for attention is so dangerous, and that's what leads to so much of the violence that the transgender community faces, you know? People assume that we're trying to draw attention to ourselves by living in a way that makes us feel good. And, and I think that that's filled with so much, um, you know, trans misogyny and so much uh, stigma that really uh, hurts and negatively impacts trans people and leads to the violence against uh, trans people, particularly trans women of color. It's probably more of a jealousy thing that folks don't know how to live their life with sincerity or what the sincerity of who they actually are as a person is. It's probably more jealousy than anything else. Yeah, and I think that there's a lot of truth to that, right? I think some of the people who have the biggest difficulty accepting and loving me as I am um, are people who have their own gender-based trauma. Trauma, that it's they have not an issue with from. you, it's an issue with them. Exactly, yeah. right? Like, you know, I, th I think even um, even when I think about my, my dad's life, right? My dad grew up in an immigrant family of seven kids uh, in a Ford family, right? They were all worked at like Ford and in factories and stuff. Michigan? In uh, Cleveland. Cleveland okay. um, and you know, so he grew up with a model of masculinity that didn't have space for for someone like me. And and I, he, I think he had to do a lot of healing and soul searching himself before he could get to a place where he felt good with me. What country which Ada's family has been from? Um, they're from Syria. Did you get a chance to go to Syria? No, I've never been, and and mostly because the violence is so intense there that I can't I can't go back. Is it on your to do list that maybe in the future the I mean, violence? I mean, of course. Will be I just. Um, of course. It's just, it's really hard to figure out, you know, when there, we're going to be in a place where I'll be able to go back to uh, to where my grandparents grew up. Let's um, hope that it does happen. Though. I hope so. I'm really praying for peace there. And this is my last question, and yeah. it leads right out of that, because we're celebrating excellence in LGBT media at the GLAAD Media Awards. But we're not done yet. Where would you like us to see going forward? I want to see trans people not just featured as spokespeople talking about trans issues or featured as documentary subjects. I want to see trans characters with real struggles in the real world, right? Um, I want to see trans people who can just have the same sort of like challenges that any sitcom character has. I want to see trans people hosting the news and interviewing people. We have that in India now. Yes, we really. Yes, yes, yes. We do. And I think that that's that's something that we can really aspire towards um, all over uh, all over the media landscape. Is that I want to ensure that gender diverse people don't just have to be sort of a subject of intrigue, but that we are actually are able to be curators of um, of society and of culture and of media. I agree. And Jacob, thank you for your time. Thank you. Of course, it's good to good to chat.